Well, good morning, everybody. This is Svieta from Home Staging Step by Step. And today I was thinking of talking about the main problems you might be having of why your house is not selling. Now, of course, it depends on where you are located, your geographical territory, your location, what the real estate market is like. But I would say that on average, if after 60 to 90 days, you don't have any offers, you don't see any interest in your house, that to me really means that there is something uh, wrong and there is a problem. So you really need to look at what the problems are. And I am providing not only, I'm only, not only discussing the problems, but I will also be providing you with some potential fixes that you can do. And um, I'm offering a free guide. You'll see the link um, in my description and it will tell you exactly where to get it so you can uh, look at that and I hope you will recognize some of the problems with your own house and then you will know what to do about it. So I know exactly how it feels. It can be very frustrating when your house is sitting on the market. It's been two months, three months, four months. Nothing is happening. Maybe you have a visit here and there. People are not making an offer. You're wondering why, what's wrong with your house. And it's also very frustrating because your life is not moving forward. You can't make any plans. It's also disruptive to your everyday life because every time people come, you know, you have to prepare, you have to make sure the house is clean and everything looks good. I know I've been there myself. I sold my house about a year ago after 17 years. And even if I'm a kind of person who doesn't like clutter, clutter, it still was a lot of work. Uh, we did sell it very fast. I must say in about three weeks, we had multiple offers, but I, I did have a, a lot of work uh, done in advance. So we did stage the house and it was pretty much perfect every time somebody came. Sorry, I just heard my dog barking in the back. So uh, let's look at the, uh, at the some of the reasons what might be happening. So the first reason is something that you cannot really control and that is a bad location. So you know how in real estate they always say location, location, location. So it is true. And unfortunately, it could happen that um, your house is just not, for whatever reason, maybe it's next to a factory or some industrial area or uh, on a busy street. So there are a lot of things can happen. Now, what can you do about it? Well, you can change your location, so that's for sure. But you can still do something about it, maybe by making your house so attractive and so nice that people will kind of not really... Pay, pay more attention to your house and less attention to the location. For example, I'll give you an example, which many years ago, I had a guy who called me and he was um, flipping a house and it was a cute house, but it was really in a bad location in the sense that there was a railroad track right next to the house. So every hour or so you would have a train going by and that was really distracting people and people were not liking that. So what did we do? I mean, obviously I cannot prevent the train from going there and uh, the train makes a lot of noise. But what we did do is we decorated the house really nicely and then we put some curtains up in the windows. So this way when people came in, it was not the first thing that they were noticing is that there railroad tracks and it actually worked he did sell the house a couple weeks later so that is something that you could really focus on is making the inside of the house really attractive the other thing again that is in uh, it is in your control but it is a big deal and that's if you have some a structural issue such as cracks in your foundation or maybe a leaky roof so there's a, those are very big issues and uh, they're important and also they're very costly so there, my advice would be really examine your budget and your priorities. And you have to be aware of the fact that either you spend, you know, quite a significant amount of money if you can afford to spend it, and then you can increase the price of your house and you can show the people that you've taken good care of your house. So that's a kind of problem that's not going to reoccur to them. Now, on the other hand, if you really don't have the budget or the time to deal with it, then you also have to uh, take into account the price that you're selling it at. And uh, obviously you just lower the price and uh, that's what happens. So the, whoever buys the house, they're going to have to deal with this issue. Uh, the third is really something that you can do a lot of things about and that's something that's called showcasing. Showcasing just means that your house doesn't present itself well. So potentially it can, every house, you know, has potential so we can make it look better and there's, every house has some issues or things that don't look so good but the, uh, every house also has 
assets and showcasing just means that you put those assets forward and you do whatever is necessary to increase the value of the house and by the way it is real value so um, it has been shown by a survey done uh, through the American Realtors Association that buyers are actually willing to pay five to ten percent more for a house that is well taken care of it looks good so showcasing your house which which means preparing it for sale properly and staging it is a real thing and it will really help you to sell your house of course, that leads me to the poor quality photos. And that is very unfortunate fact, which shouldn't really exist, but I still see on, uh, in, on the internet, not all photos are professional quality. And of course, as you are aware, you know, most people today, I would say over 90% of the people probably, they pre-select the houses they wanna visit uh, through internet so what do they look at obviously they look at the photos only and if the photos are of poor qualities or if uh, the house doesn't look clean or well presented or well decorated the first impression that people get is not a good one so that will detract a lot of your potential buyers and potential visitors to your house from just moving on and going to look at another uh, another uh, house so my advice is very simple you know it's it's not a lot of money we're talking maybe hundred dollars but make sure that whether you're doing it yourself or your realtor is taking care of it but that you do hire a professional real estate photographer to take uh, photos of your house it can change everything the number five and that's a little touchy and that's an inefficient real estate agent or realtor that is the reality I don't really want to talk about that but like in any other field there are people who are very good at their jobs and there are people who are not so good at their jobs and people who are not so good at that job is people who will take your listing and basically just sit there inactively and wait for something to happen and whether they will get lucky and somebody will call them and make an appointment now this is not the kind of realtor that you want so my advice is to be very very selective when you shop around interview two or three or four different realtors ask them to prepare a marketing plan for you to show you exactly what they're going to be doing and whether they're going to be doing open houses whether they're going to be advertising uh, on social media and every everywhere so that is something that you should not be passive about at all it really is important that you choose the person you're the most comfortable with that you're confident in and that uh, they are um, serving you well so they're working for you remember that now number six and that again it has to do with the realtors and that is something that maybe you're not aware of but that has to do with real estate uh, commissions so read your contract very very well when you sign um, with the realtor because uh, you need to understand how the commissions are going to be split who pays them in most countries it's the uh, seller who pays the commission to both the listing agent and the uh, guest agent the one who brings the client but you need to see what is the commission that is being paid to the guest agent because if it is too low then um, they will not be interested in selling your house they will be bringing people to a different house where they're going to be making more money so if you want to understand this concept a little more I suggest you go read my blog on homestagingstepbystep.com and uh, then it, I think it's called uh, homestagingstepbystep.com selling your house and that will explain it in a little bit more details or you can just drop me a line and I'll be happy to talk to you about it and reason number seven of why your house might not be selling right now is that uh, what it's called its property has gone stale and what it means it's very simply is that it's a proven fact that properties are hot on the market and that's when they generate the most interest it's in the first three to four weeks of them being on the market so if the, it has been sitting for let's say three months or even four months it's not popping up at the top of the list for the properties when somebody is looking and so when people see that the property has been sitting there for a long time they start wondering what's wrong with this place you know how come it hasn't sold that means that there's something really wrong with the house and that might not be necessarily the case but that's mentally what most people will think so my solution for that 
would be uh, that you can do some uh, real estate tricks. So basically you can take it off the market, you can change a few things, you can restage it, and then you can bring it back as a new listing and then it will regenerate interest with potential buyers. And the number eight and the last one, but it could be one of the biggest ones actually, and that's simply enough, the price. Because a lot of times, unfortunately, uh, we do our research or we don't, but the price that we list our houses is the price on based on what we want, but it might not be a realistic expectation of your marketplace, of your location, of the time of the year, of the competition or whatever it is. And I understand that nobody really knows the exact 